So shall we, what if, how about we do this? Well, I'll make a brand new score in MuseScore and we'll explore dissonance and also speeding things up, slowing them down and having multiple lines on a score. So what, what I'm going to do is make a brand new uh, demo score with Fox. Okay, now there's kind of some default settings. So I clicked new score and now we're in the new score wizard. So I always just pick a piano and I get rid of the bass clef and then I would just finish here. Don't fiddle with anything else. And then we'll save this. You save it wherever you save it. I save it where I save it. If you just take the defaults, it's always in 4-4 time. In order to settle the loudness and the speed, you're going to have to use what's called the palette. So you want to view the palette. So the easiest way to enter notes is to view the piano. View piano keyboard. So if I want to add notes, I go to note input and it, the default is a quarter note. So let's da 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 oops da 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 that's my memory of your theme. There is a way to enter them with your MIDI keyboard. For now, you can just use the piano to add notes. Go add note, and let's listen to how fast it goes. And you're saying, well, that's too fast. Well, that's because there's a default tempo that it doesn't tell you about. The default tempo is 120. So if you realize that if you don't specify the tempo, you're going to get 120, and that's too fast, well then you come in here and you say, well, you double click it and say, well, give me 80. Okay, well, that's still too fast. I don't like it. Okay, well then the tempo. Now the other thing to be clear about is the, how loud is it? By default, it's always medium loud or mezzo forte. So if I go here and I click on MF, it's the same. So, if you don't specify your your uh, your tempo and your vol your dynamic, it's going to be 120 and mezzo forte. Okay, so we'll go with mezzo forte. Now we want to add another part and do dissonance. The shortcut is I. Aha! Uh -huh. Edit instruments. Okay, so edit instruments. I say, well, this is great. I have a piano, but I, we want to do a dissonant thing. So once again, we're going to add another line. And once again, I don't show the bass clef. All of a sudden, we have two lines. If we just copy all this, I mean, do I need to show that that's a G? I need to see it as a G. Okay, I want to talk about dissonance. You can see right now that these two notes are the same because they're only showing one note. But if I were to jump that up by one little boom, and everything went up, I'm just moving everything one and I'll call it a half step. Every pitch on the piano, that's a half step. This has an interval of one from G to the next note is an interval of one, and this is considered highly dissonant. If dissonance is things that sound harsh, and consonant are things that sound good, so an interval of zero, which is unison, this is unison. So they sound perfectly in tune. And even if I jump up 
one octave. They're perfectly in tune. So we call that the highest consonants, a consonants of th three. I'm going to bring this up one half step. But the same thing goes the other way. Suppose I brought it down by one. So it doesn't matter what the two notes are. It's just that they're one apart. What else is consonant and dissonant? If I were to jump up by four half steps on this side, one, two, three, four, this says it should sound pretty good. Now it sounds a little eerie. Let's try six steps. Two more. But here's the thing about dissonance. This interval of six is jazz uses it all over the place. And then finally, if we bring it up to seven half steps, When you're composing and you have a voice and a counter voice, so let's listen to your your piece again. Da, 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 da. So you just brought in the counter voice. Da, 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 da. Okay, so your F and your C. Okay, so let's check that. Here's the F. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. So you're using in that counter voice, you're coming in at a perfect seven. That's the highest possible consonants. Let's listen to where else you go. You're playing a B. C in the B, that's an interval one. So now you've jumped to a consonance of one. So you're inter by that extra voice is giving that little creative tension in there. And now you're playing a different interval. FGA. So you've got an FGA going in in there. Let's listen to this too from your piece. Now if you look at what's happening here, that's an interval one, two, three, four. So that's an interval of four. And then here, you're going the G and the B. That's another four. And then one, two, three. Now see, there's a difference. This is an interval of three. You're going four, four, three. So an interval of three is slightly less consonant. It's the two, and your interval of four is a consonant of three. Now, I find it helpful when you're composing to keep track of your intervals, and, and when you kind of know which ones are kind of and which ones are and then the ones that are in the middle just gives you it's like more salt less salt more pepper less pepper so what we've demonstrated is how to know the tempo you're playing at view your palette and the the shortcut for that is f9 and then view your piano is just a p okay like that and you add notes here using note input. You can either click like this, or you can click like this, and that's about it. And then the shortcut for N notes is N. Remember to save your work. The way that you record what you've played here is you, you, you export. You click MP3, just take all the defaults and export it where you save your recordings. Give it a few seconds because it's 
turning all of this into MP3. And then, you see, through the magic Then somewhere up here, some here. Those are perfect fourths, or perfect sevenths, maybe. And that was unison. And that was a four-four-three.